And this is what happens when you don't have law and order. If you've not seen this, a mob of almost 50 steals up to $100,000 of merchandise at an L.A. Nordstrom in broad daylight. Let's play some video here for you. taking fixtures out the store. Now, there was a guard there, but he was pepper sprayed or bear sprayed or something like that uh, before it happened. Now, it seems like these types of incidents are happening fairly often in Los Angeles. I wonder why. Uh, I just found out through this article here that this happened in Glendale, California, at a different store. They took a, they apparently took about three hundred thousand dollars worth of merchandise. Now that seems like a, a nice mall there, the Glendale Mall. I believe I've heard of that. Um, originally, I'm from California, and I've been to a lot of the malls in the Los Angeles area. But uh, how can we forget this one as well that happened at Seven Eleven? Justice. It's an unbelievable sight as a flash mob bursts into a 7-Eleven and start looting the store. One 7-Eleven clerk watches helplessly as the unruly mob pile into the store. Without a worry in the world, the brazen looters grab everything in sight. Cookies, candy, chips, just about every item of merchandise. LAPD says about 100 young people joined in the 1 a.m. chaos. They had been taking part in what's being called an illegal street takeover, where motorists had flooded the intersection to block off traffic. Here in Texas, we don't play that. If you, if you watch my videos, uh, Greg Abbott has signed some stuff into law to push back on these street takeovers. But this lawless bunch took it further and overtook the store. This dude got really aggressive, flinging bananas at the clerk who was hiding in the corner of the store. The See, I've watched his, I remember when this happened. I don't remember seeing that part, throwing bananas at the clerk. And this guy jumped the counter, throwing cartons of cigarettes to the crowd. The free-for-all wasn't done yet. They tried to steal the cash register and grabbed as many lotto tickets as they could. They all rushed out of the store with their loot before police got there. Unbelievable. But this is what happens when you... When the precedent is set that nothing really bad is going to happen to you, when you don't lay down the law aggressively, when you coddle uh, thugs and criminals, when you don't put aggressive policies in place, when you don't respect law and order, when you don't respect the police department, when you vilify police, when you have a governor that doesn't back law and order, that doesn't back the law enforcement the way some governors do, like they do, like we, we do here in Texas or in Florida or in Iowa, Idaho. I can name many places uh, run, with Republican governors who back the police and have aggressive laws. I'm not saying these places are perfect. We have our crime. We have things that go on here in Texas. But with these street takeovers, uh, there's a lot of, there's a possibility for other things to happen. A lot of drugs are found in these, in these cars and weapons. And it leads to things like this with these mobs of, of people ransacking stores and things like that. Now, I used to work in, I had a career in loss prevention, and I saw a lot of people take stuff from stores. They, you know, 
they scope out the store, they maybe come back two or three times, kind of figure out where everything is. I actually got beat up pretty badly one time by four people. It was myself and my coworker. Uh, they took some purses and things like that, comforters, and we went out to stop them. Uh, we got our asses kicked, to say the least. I got punched in the head. In the, in the head, I kicked in the head. Um, I got thrown by this monster. This monstrosity of a woman. Yes, she was. Yes, it was a woman. Uh, probably about two hundred fifty pounds or so. Uh, picked me up and tossed me, and then I got kicked in the head by after that, um, because she saw that I uh, took her, one of her uh, partners in crime, uh, to the ground. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It was a bad situation. So I, about four months later, I just said I, I can't do it anymore because of. Uh, Look out for my safety. But anyway, um, this is what happens when you don't lay down the law on people. When you put these laws in place that may make it easy for people to, uh, to, to not go to jail, you take away you know, bail and things like that. You see it happening in New York. Um, certain crimes become less... Uh, they're not punished as hard, I guess I should say. That's why a lot of places should go to what Giuliani did in New York with the um, broken windows policy. You do something small, you're going to jail. You break it, you know, you, you, you hop the, the, you jump the, the, get on a train without paying, you go to jail. You do shoplift, you go to jail. You don't let the criminals um, not get in trouble for these things, I should say. But yeah. This will continue to happen in these blue states and these in, in places with these blue mayors and uh, blue city council because they feel like these people just need to uh, try to feed their families like AOC said. Just trying to feed their families. Yeah, right. I guarantee you none of these people have jobs here either. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thanks for listening. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Take care.